Basic division with remainders. Before we talk about remainders, let's review what is division. Division is taking a group of objects and separating them into smaller equal groups. Say we have 12 craft pom-poms. We want to separate the pom-poms evenly into three cups so that there are the same number in each cup. Hmm, but that wasn't even. I have five in one cup, three in another, and four in the last cup. Let's try again, one pom-pom at a time. So far, each cup has one pom-pom. Let's keep going. There, the cups are even. Each cup has four pom-poms. When we divide, it's like dealing cards. The dealer gives one card to each player until they've given out all the cards, and this is how they make sure that each player gets the same number of cards. In our pom-pom example, we had 12 pom-poms and we divided them into three cups. We solved the division problem 12 divided by three. We ended up with four pom-poms in each cup. So 12 divided by three equals four. Each of these numbers has a name. The dividend is the total number of objects, the big number. The divisor is the number of groups you're separating the objects into. And the quotient is the number of objects in each group. It's the answer. When we divide larger numbers, we use a bracket instead of a division sign. Still, we have the dividend, which is the larger number, the divisor, the number of groups, and the quotient, the answer, or the number of objects in each group. So how do we solve basic division problems? Well, one way is to use actual objects like we did with the pom-poms. This strategy is called concrete modeling. Another way is to draw a picture. Let's do 12 divided by three using a picture this time. First, draw three groups, then draw dots or tally marks or whatever to divide up 12. Remember, put one in each group like you're dealing cards. This is how you make sure to keep your groups even. And I'm gonna keep going until I've dealed out 12 tally marks. There. Count as you go and stop when you get to 12, and then look at how many are in each group. Four. Another strategy is to use fact families. Instead of thinking about this as a division problem, flip it around to create a multiplication problem with a missing number like this. Instead of thinking about 12 divided by three, think about three times what equals 12. Oh, I know, three times four equals 12. So 12 divided by three equals four. Let's try modeling another division problem using pom-poms. This time, we're going to have a remainder. We're gonna divide 13 divided by three. So I have 13 pom-poms and three groups or cups. Let's divide them up. Hmm, what about this one? If we put it in one of the cups, they won't be even. So far, they all have four pom-poms. If I put this last pom-pom in a cup, one of them will have five and the others will have four. And I know I can't do that. They have to have the same amount. This is called a remainder. We just leave it to the side. The answer is four because there are four pom-poms in each cup. And then we have a remainder of one. And we show that by writing the letter R for remainder and then one next to the answer. We just added a new vocabulary word. We already knew dividend, the total number of objects, the big number, and divisor, the number of groups, 
and we knew quotient, which is the answer, the number of objects in each group. Now we have a remainder, which is how many objects are left over. We can also write this using the bracket, the dividend, the divisor, the quotient, and the remainder. We can use concrete modeling to solve division with remainders, just like we did when we didn't have a remainder. We can use the pom-poms. Thirteen divided by three equals four remainder one. We can also use a picture, just like we did without a remainder. Same strategy, draw three groups and start dividing up your 13 dots or tally marks or whatever, like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. That one goes off to the side. And now I see my answer. I have four in each group and I have one left over. So four remainder one. We can also use fact families, but it's a little bit trickier. So instead of thinking of 13 divided by 3, think of it like 3 times what equals 13. Hmm. Well, the trouble is you can't multiply 3 by anything to get 13. But how close can you get to 13? Count by 3. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 5 is 15. Hmm, that's too high. Well, 3 times 4 is 12. That's as close as I can get to 13 without going over. Now, I just need one more to get from 12 to 13. That's the remainder. This video was created by La Fontaine of Knowledge. Click the link in the description for lesson materials that go along with the video, and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.